And next, um, uh, Steve Murphy's um, going to talk. Um, Steve, as many of you know, is one of the best published hip surgeons um, in the world, I, should, I suppose. He's mainly been in Boston and New England, and he's going to tell us about um, his work um, on what may be the, the next generation of, of, of um, computer assistants. Steve. Thank you for the kind introduction, Justin. It's a pleasure to um, be invited to speak to you today. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you about uh, uh, mechanical navigation, smart surgical instruments, and at this point, uh, this is really based on um, CT studies. So the problem, as we all know, is that uh, acetabular component malpositioning in particular can lead to instability, impingement, accelerated wear, wear-induced osteolysis, and in the case of metal-metal, joints increased metal hypersensitivity and early revision for any of these problems. And if you look at all of the good studies, including one that was presented earlier this morning, the vast majority of cups that are placed with traditional methods are malpositioned, significantly malpositioned. And the reason for this primarily is because we don't know where the pelvis is in space and it's almost never squarely positioned for a patient in the lateral position. Um, I became very interested in navigation in the mid-1990s and started navigating hips in 1997 and then consistently on virtually every patient in 2001. And I noticed, as many of you have, that there's a small percentage of people that use navigation routinely for hip surgery and the vast majority of people do not. And so the question is, why is that? And I think some of the reasons are that it's time consuming, it's equipment intensive, we have frame fixation issues and frame loosening issues and soft bone. Sometimes it's difficult to register abnormal anatomy. We have the camera needing to see what's going on instead of another uh, surgical assistant. And we have more problems with revisions uh, than we do with primaries. And so if we could do this quickly and accurately, maybe we could encourage more people to do it. And so that's where we had the idea of planning the surgery uh, in advance using the computers and then getting the computers out of the operating room and using just smart mechanical instruments. And the way we do this is with 3D modeling, we create a pelvic coordinate system and then we create a coordinate system for the instrument uh, and we custom adjust the instrument for the particular patient. Uh, so we have two planes. We have the um, anterior pelvic plane and the instrument plane and we do translations between the two to calculate the adjustments on the instrument to give us a direction indicator that's pointing in the direction that we want to put the cup in. And we do this first by uh, developing an anterior pelvic plane, but we're not restricted to an anterior pelvic plane uh, uh, specifically. We can adjust it based on lumbosacral motion studies. We can adjust it intraoperatively based on the femoral version. And since 2002, I've been doing the femur first and incorporating femoral component information, really trying to normalize it rather than to adjust the cup position as a result. Uh, and in the future, we hope to be able to do this on plane radiographs. So the idea is to get away from the abnormal anatomy and to uh, have one leg of a stool on the um, ischium, and then another one on the lateral aspect of the anterior superior iliac spine, and then the third point is determined automatically because it's equidistant between the first two and on the surface of the bone, so that's a unique solution for the third. And then we fine tune the base point so that it's exactly 20 millimeters from the infracotyloid region to standardize the location of that point. Um, and then this just shows once we know that, we do instant transformations between the anterior pelvic coordinate system and the sextant coordinate system, so if you want to put the cup in a certain version and abduction, it will do the translations for the uh, two angles on the instrument. So in surgery, we use a calibrated drill guide to put a guide pin into the ischium. That's meant to be a point, not a line. Next thing we do is put the cup in place provisionally. And then we slide the instrument over that guide pin that goes to the base point and we cinch that on that guide pin. And the next thing would be to put the superior spine point in and we provisionally place that point percutaneously like an arthroscopic trocar. And then I take that out and probe to make sure that we're in the right place, much like you would with a sharp digitizing probe with computer-assisted surgery so that we can move that probe around and make sure we're right at the very edge uh, anteriorly 
coming off around the anterior superior iliac spine. Once we're sure where we are, we put that point in uh, uh, permanently, if you will, for the rest of the uh, acetabular alignment. And then we put the third point in, and now this instrument docks on the side of the pelvis. And you can see there's a little direction indicator there that we just put a modular pin on, and we just visually align the two. And what this does is it gets rid of the cameras and it sets you up for success so that you can use your own eyes essentially as the optical navigation camera. Uh, and you can see you just line up the axes of your cup insertion handle and the, um, and the alignment guide so that they are um, parallel. To measure the accuracy, we use 2D, 3D uh, registration um, to calculate the accuracy of the cup using plain x-rays after surgery and a pre-op 3D CT to correct for pelvic malposition. And we compared this to a series of CT-based navigation cases that we had done previously. And if you look at the results here, um, you can see that the average uh, inclination for the hip sextant was a little bit less than 45 degrees, and you can see the standard deviation was about three, and the range was about 15 degrees, and you can see antiversion at average of 26.5, again with um, uh, uh, a deviation of about 15 degrees over the whole range. And this included cases that were not used with a calibrated drill guide, which actually improved the accuracy. You can see if you plot out a, a safe zone, our antiversion goal was a little bit higher than the classic and you can see a few up at the upper edge of antiversion. Um, and since we've gone to the calibrated drill guide and lowering our antiversion goal, um, we've brought the cases into the safe zone. If you compare to CT-based navigation, there's a couple of interesting things. They're very similar. The standard deviations for the hip sextant are actually a little bit better than they are for CT-based navigation, and the range is a little bit smaller, but essentially there's no statistically significant difference between our group of CT-based uh, classical hip navigation and the mechanical instrument. So in summary, it's a, it's a very simple and rapid method of performing acetabular component orientation uh, uh, registration during surgery, and it's universally adjustable and reusable, so you can use it one case after another. Um, and since it can be adjusted over a wide population, we, we don't think that we need individualized custom templates for uh, mechanical navigation, if you will. And compared to traditional navigation, which we have some significant experience with, it's much faster. We don't have problems with reference frame fixation and loosening. We don't have line of sight issues. Um, and we certainly have been successful at getting rid of uh, some of the equipment in the operating room. And it's actually much more robust because you can use it for revision surgery, you can use it for very complex anatomy, where ordinarily if the iliac wing is missing surgically or something like that, we would be unable to register using a classic navigation system. And our current work is on statistical modeling so that we can do this on point radiographs instead of on CT. Uh, but the CT is very fast and simple and inexpensive, actually. And we hope that um, instead of forcing surgeons to learn navigation, we bring the navigation to the surgeons to make it a little bit easier so that a larger percentage of surgeons will actually do a better job of cup navigation. Thank you very much. Um, Steve, that was great.